Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for watching Gifts TV. If today is your first time watching Gifts TV, kindly subscribe. Already subscribe, continue to like and share our videos so that YouTube will recommend our videos for others to also watch. Today's video, I'll be looking at how to conduct program evaluation. How to conduct program evaluation. So I'll walk you through 10 steps. Okay. All right. By conducting a program evaluation, it involves several key steps. Okay. That systematically assess the effectiveness, efficiency, the relevance, and sustainability of a program. So stay with me as I walk you through the 10 steps. First step is that you have to define the purpose and the scope. Here, you must clearly outline the objectives of the evaluation and what aspect of the program that you want to assess. By doing so, you have to determine the, the scope of the evaluation by including the time frame and the resource available for the task. Very important. The second step is that you have to develop the evaluation questions because evaluation is all about answering the evaluation questions. So if you want to assess a program, a policy, or a project, you need to develop evaluation questions. So here you must first from these specific questions that you want to uh, the evaluation to answer. So you must define or, or develop or formulate specific questions that you want the evaluation to answer. And these questions should be aligned with the purpose and the goals of what the program. So the purpose, and the goals must inform the development of the evaluation question, take note of that. And the same thing, the questions, the purpose, and the goals must also inform the design. Therefore, the next step is to select evaluation design and the methods. So you have to choose an appropriate evaluation design and better based on the nature of the program and the evaluation questions. Some of the common evaluation design include experimental or quasi-experimental designs, non-experimental designs, okay? You also have mixed methods, approaches as well. And we have methods that can include surveys, interviews, focus group observations, document reviews, and statistical analysis. All these methods, okay, you can utilize any of these methods to help you to what? Operationalize your research design. The next Step is, that's the first step is to collect data. Here you must collect relevant data according to the selected method, and you must ensure that the data collection method are appropriate for the evaluation questions and as well as the target group. It's very important to gather both qualitative and quantitative data in order to provide a comprehensive understanding of the program's impact. It's very important to take note of that. And as part of the various um, steps, the next step is that after collecting the data, you have to analyze the data, okay? After the data collection, the fifth step is that you have to analyze the data. So here you have to analyze the collected data by using appropriate statistical and qualitative analysis techniques. Very important. So you have to use both the quantitative and qualitative technique depending on what the design. If it's a missed method, it means you will need, you have to utilize a quantitative tool and a qualitative two. But if it's only qualitative, you only use qualitative two. If it's only quantitative, you use quantitative twos. So you have to look for patterns, trends, correlations, and other insights that can help answer the evaluation question, depending on the nature of the questions that you ask. Then after the analysis, you have to interpret the findings. Here, you have to interpret the findings of the data analysis in the context of the evaluation questions and the program goals. You must identify strengths, weaknesses, successes, challenges, and areas for improvement because the rationale behind the evaluation is to ensure continuous work improvement. Then after the interpretation of the findings, you have to report the results, okay? Because you plan the evaluation with use in mind, okay? You have to make sure that the evaluation that you guys are embarking on, you are planning use in mind, okay? The agency, the organization, okay, they must be able to utilize the results. So you have to report the results. That's the seventh step, report results. Prepare a comprehensive report that summarizes the evaluation findings, conclusions, and recommendations, and include evidence-based recommendation for the program improvement based on the evaluation findings, because you want to ensure continuous improvement. So you must make sure that in reporting your findings, you include evidence-based recommendation so that the program will ensure continuous work improvement based on the evaluation findings. The eighth step is that you have to use the result for decision-making. After reporting the results, you must use the result for decision-making. 
How can you achieve that? Ensure that the evaluation results are used to inform decision making, okay, regarding the program by implementing recommended changes and improvement based on what evaluation finding to enhance the program effectiveness and impact. The ninth step is that you have to monitor and follow up. You monitor and follow up. You must continuously monitor the program's performance and follow up on the implementation of what the recommendations by conducting periodic evaluation to track progress and make further adjustments as needed. The last step, that's the 10th step, is that you must ensure ethical considerations as well. So throughout the evaluation process, ensure that ethical principles are followed, including confidentiality, informed consent, respect for participants, right? All these protocols need to be followed so that you don't breach any ethical violations, very important. So by following all these steps, these 10 steps, you can conduct a thorough and meaningful program evaluation that provides a valuable insight for program improvement and for decision making. Thank you.